Hi guys, well I've come down to the river this afternoon, the intention is to shoot some time lapse video and hopefully get a tutorial out of it. It's been a strange day weather wise, I thought it was going to be perfect earlier, lots of uh, interesting clouds whipping over and it started to rain heavily which isn't ideal for being out in so I waited till the rain stops and I've come out and uh, I'm sort of in a bit of a gap really. That's that's gone, that's the rain that's behind me and that's what's coming so there's uh, the sun's behind the big cloud at the moment and uh, I'd like that to come out before I start uh, and I'd like that bank of cloud in the distance there to get a bit closer because there's some quite interesting clouds in that lot and uh, it'd be nice to see those bubbling up which is what you get in the, the time lapse okay so what is time lapse video you know in a normal movie it's uh, made up of 20 or 25 frames a second and uh, runs all together so it's just just film that's what you're used to some uh, films even shoot faster than 25 uh, shots a second now frames a second but um, time lapse is what photographers can do with their own cameras and uh, you shoot each individual frame and it can be seconds apart if you want it depends how fast things are moving but more of that later and then you uh, get a video editor and you stick them all together and the editor sticks them together at 20 or 25 frames per second so everything moves really really fast so you can condense half an hour or an hour into 10, 15, 20 seconds and it can be quite interesting you can do it with people and you get that sort of Benny Hill effect of sort of walking really really fast sort of comedy walks and you can do it with traffic make everything move really really quickly again and you can caption it rush hour and think you're really clever yeah, we've all done, I've done that. Yeah, we've all done that. Um, but uh, as a landscape photographer, mainly, I mean, I like to use, I do clouds. Clouds are fascinating anyway. But you rarely see the movement when you look at them. You can look at them for half an hour and nothing really seems to change. But if you'd videoed it and uh, yeah, and speeded it up, well, you've you've seen the video, so you know what I'm talking about. Everything's really dynamic and bubbly and uh, moves around in all sorts of different directions. So that's what I'm going to try to capture today. If the clouds will play fair they're slowly moving up but we're still in the in the shade here at the moment so that's the principle of it shoot one shot every few seconds shoot about four or five hundred of them stick them in a the video editor when you get back home time lapse video okay so what you have to do first is to find interval timer shooting in the menu of your camera not all cameras have got it there was a time when no Canons did and you had to buy a special adapter but uh, they maybe do now but anyway I'm a Nikon guy so I've got it um, the moment it's off but if you go into it that shows the actual intervals between shots so at the moment it's set to three seconds I think I'll stick with that that seems fair enough click across and that's how many shots you're going to take so that's set at 400 at the moment I'll move it up to 600 and if it gets a bit tedious gets a bit boring and uh, nothing's happening I can always stop okay we go back it's off at the moment it's set to start now when I hit on so if I moved it up and hit on it would start shooting but I'm not going to do that just yet okay so that's the interval timer settings now I'm shooting in aperture mode um, this is open for debate but the one thing you don't want to be doing is shooting in auto a lot of people shoot in manual but the downside of shooting in manual is that you've got the same setting all the way through and if the light changes drastically which it may well do today with the cloud coming in and out and the sun coming in and out then your video is going to go very very dark in phases and very overexposed in other phases so I tend to use aperture priority in this situation so that the camera will adjust itself slightly um, when the light changes and so hopefully that will then look more realistic rather than going horribly dark and then horribly bright which is what would happen in manual okay so that's my personal priority aperture priority for shooting these now you don't want anything really anything else in auto as little in auto as possible 
So I'm in manual focus because you don't want the focus searching around every frame. Every time a swan goes past or a bit of vegetation flows down the river, as just happened, otherwise your video will look very flickery and in and out of focus all the time. So that's on manual focus and focused away in the far distance, just more or less infinity and dial it back in again. Um, the white balance isn't on auto either, that's set for uh, a dull cloudy day and it'll cope if the sun comes out. But again, you don't want it in auto so that that's searching around and changing the white balance between frames because all sorts of strange horrible things happen. And uh, I think that's about it really, so we're just waiting for the uh, cloud over there to get a bit closer and hopefully we can see the nice reflections in the water. So we've chosen this spot so we get a bit of uh, movement in the water and up there and hopefully the clouds are coming towards me which is always more interesting than going across. It's the same uh, sort of concept really that you use with light trails. Movement across the frame is okay but it tends to go from average to tediously boring whereas movement towards you or away from you is far more interesting.